The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When the Magi had departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise, take the child and his mother, flee to Egypt, and stay there until I tell you. Herod is going to search for the child to destroy him. Joseph rose and took the child and his mother by night and departed for Egypt. He stayed there until the death of Herod, that what the Lord had said through the prophet might be fulfilled. Out of Egypt I called my son. When Herod had died, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Rise, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel. For those who sought the child's life are dead. He rose, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was ruling over Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go back there. And because he had been warned in a dream, he departed for the region of Galilee. He went and dwelt in a town called Nazareth, so that what the prophet had spoken might be fulfilled. He shall be called a Nazarene. The Gospel of the Lord. I don't know about you, but I am sick and tired of trying to raise a G-rated family in an X-rated society. I've had it up to here. Your applause indicates a slight agreement. Indeed, there are many things going on in the world and especially in culture and in Western culture that should be alarming us. Pope Leo XIII was the originator of the Feast of the Holy Family, if you will, in 1893. He felt that to name this as a feast was a proper response to what he perceived as a threat to culture, society, and the church. He saw the West as becoming more and more morally depraved, and he had great concern. Pope Leo XIII is also the author of a well-used prayer in minor exorcisms. He had the gift of being able to see and respond to evil in the world. His prayer in exorcism has a small part that's allowed to be used by lay people. It's called the prayer of Saint Michael. That's part of a larger prayer. He was worried. He was worried about society. He was worried about culture. He was worried about the church. And he was worried about you and your soul. Later on, in 1914, Pope Benedict XV made it a universal feast in the church, officially placed on the church's calendar. And the Second Vatican Council named the Feast of the Holy Family for a, for a Sunday during the season of Christmas with such urgency they wanted the Holy Family treasured and revered. We have a saying in the church, we pray 
what we believe. And indeed, the installation of this feast is a call for every Catholic to pray and to treasure the family and to guard the family, to guard the family in the image that God has designed, not in mere social conventions or the caprice and whim of politicking. The problems that the fathers of the Second Vatican Council, Pope Benedict XV and Leo XIII, they not only persist, but they have grown. One of the great problems that faces us today is pornography. Let us just say for um, ears that are sensitive, if they ask, it could be defined as disrespecting the beauty and dignity of the person in God's image. Disrespecting the beauty and the dignity of the image of God in the human person. I often wonder where women's rights organizations are in speaking against this horror. Their absence to me is indicative of the truth of certain organizations. Not all, but certain ones. Next month, we're going to have a workshop here in this parish, January 17th, 18th, and, 9th, uh, 17th and 18th. There'll be a series of workshops for awareness and how to fight pornography in our time. There are flyers in the parish bulletin. There's information on the web page. Would like you to please consider talking about this with friends and getting people to go. This is urgent. This issue right now is one of the largest threats against family. Now that I've pointed out the devil, I want to show you the hope. It's Jesus. We need Jesus. As you can see with Mary and Joseph, Jesus was the heart and the center of their family. We were created so that we would always have a holy family that's in union with God. Since that faded day in the Garden of Eden where Adam and Eve lost everything, God has continued to reach out to us in His mercy and he's continued to insert himself in our families, especially in and through and with Jesus Christ, whom we, like Joseph and Mary, should welcome into the mangers of our home. Yes, some of our homes are as messy as a manger, but he wants to go there. He wants to be invited. St. Paul reminds us in his letter to the Colossians chapter 3 that we hear today, let the peace of Christ control your hearts. Let the peace of Christ control your hearts. But the peace of Christ cannot be influencing my heart if I'm not coming to Jesus and welcoming him. And it's for this reason that we need our Sundays with the Lord, don't we? We need ourselves to come to the manger and receive Christ so that Christ is at the heart of our family. Christ is at the heart of our week. Christ is at the heart of my schedule. Christ is at the heart of all my priorities. And we need to open to Christ in prayer so that I can't imagine a day without prayer. Prayer is so much part of the fabric of my life. Prayer to Jesus is so much a part of my, the fabric of my life that, that not praying for a day would be like not brushing my teeth or something. Without prayer, 
without the sacraments of the church, without the body, the blood, the soul, and divinity of Jesus to come inside of us through Eucharist, how can the peace of Christ be in my heart? And yet, that is the only way to have a holy family. St. Paul further tells us, let the word of Christ dwell richly in you. Let the word of Christ dwell richly in you. And so we need to become more and more familiar with Scripture. As St. Jerome says, if you don't know Scripture, you don't know Christ. So we need to dust off our Bibles and we need to look at the Scriptures daily. Father, I don't have time for that. Start to make time for it if you want a holy family because a holy family subsists on the words of Christ. Even if you come to Mass faithfully, if you're coming to Mass faithfully, you're going to receive plenty of Scripture. You can have more. But the point is that if the Word of Christ dwells richly in you, then dilemmas during the day or thoughts that I have are surrounded by the Word of Christ. If there's a problem situation, a parable comes to my mind and it reminds me of what I need to do. It's by the Word of God that I define a family. And if I'm not familiar with God's Word in Scripture, if I'm not familiar with the way He has spoken through the church on family, then I'm not going to have a holy family. Do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus. Everything. Do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus. For a while it was a fad to walk around with these little bracelets on our wrists. It said, do what, Je what would Jesus do? WWJD? No. That's not enough. We can't speculate on what Jesus would do. We have to know what Jesus would do. And we know what Jesus does by coming to Christ in his scriptures, in the Eucharist, in the teaching of the church. We don't think, what would Jesus do? We do what we know Jesus would do. But unless your heart is for Christ, you'll never know. It's so easy to pollute the truth of Jesus with our personal fancy and desire. So we need to go to Jesus and the truth. And we need to access the sacrament of reconciliation when we discover ourselves confusing the issues. Jesus is the answer to the heart of everyone who wants to have a family a holy family in Christ. We have a marvelous devotion in the church for this. It's called the Sacred Heart. Jesus revealed to St. Margaret Mary the truths of the, his Sacred Heart, that his mercy was being poured out for people and that if someone would enshrine his sacred heart with an image in their homes and let that image be a reminder, a testament, and a calling to a spirituality that pines for the heart of Christ, this devotion would not go without its benefits. I'm not talking about hanging a picture in your room with a pretty frame. I'm talking about placing a, an image of the Sacred Heart of Jesus in a ritual fashion in the home so that it enshrines and displays that Jesus Christ is the Lord of his house and his heart is the heart of this family. Family meetings take place in the room where the image is. Big decisions are made with a view with Christ. 
Visitors come in and can see the image. And you become a promoter of the heart of Christ for the world to see as the heart of every family. If you look in our parish bulletin, there's instructions on how to consecrate your homes to the Sacred Heart. It's a, it's a constant in the bulletin. We have information packets available on how to do it, the prayers to install the image of the Sacred Heart prayerfully. Again, this is not about hanging a nice picture in your house. It's about hanging an image prominently placed that reminds us of who the heart of our home is and the spirituality that goes with it. I'd like to share with you the promises that come from enshrining the sacred heart in our homes. Jesus said these things to St. Margaret Mary. To those who enshrine an image of the sacred heart, I will give them all all the graces necessary for their state in life. All the graces necessary for their state in life. The Sacred Heart, then, is an image that in difficult marriages, God can provide the grace necessary if Jesus Christ is the heart of the home and the family. The Sacred Heart is an image that's hung in a rectory that reminds the priests that live in community, you gotta get along and you gotta go even when the tough times are here. I will give peace in their families. Who doesn't want that? I will give peace in their families. I will console them in their troubles. I will be their refuge in life and especially in death. Anyone who works in the medical profession can probably confirm what I'm about to say, but I've been attendance, in attendance at many deathbeds as a priest. And I can tell you that based on what I have seen, there's a very big difference between a person who dies without faith and a person who dies with faith. People without faith who are dying are frightened and go in horror and trembling. And people with faith pass peacefully. Their great anxiety is having family around them or trying to get a priest. And they go peacefully because they're in the heart of Christ. We need the sacred heart of Jesus in our families. I will abundantly bless all the undertakings of such a family, abundantly. Sinners shall find in my heart the source and infinite ocean of mercy. You see, this doesn't presume that the sacred heart image is to be placed in a house of all canonized saints. They don't need it. But sinners can find refuge in the heart of Christ. And that's what we need, isn't it? My name is Mo, and I'm a sinner. And I need the heart of Christ. Tepid souls shall become fervent. I will bless the places where the image of my heart shall be exposed and venerated. Bless those places. So some of you, when you go back to your college dorms, bring a statue or an image of the Sacred Heart. If your friends ridicule you, you just say, based on what I've seen in this dormitory, we could use some help around here. My college years haven't been that far away. Here's my favorite. I will give to priests the power to touch the most hardened of hearts. And that's not for the glory of the priest. That's for the glory of God. 
But a priest has to have the heart of Christ, too. We're working on it. Persons who propagate this devotion shall have their names eternally written in my heart. Did you hear that? Imagine your name eternally written in the very heart of Jesus. What is God going to say to you when you stand in judgment if your name is written on the very heart of Jesus Christ? Wow. I want that. In the excess of mercy of my heart, I promise, Jesus would say to Margaret Mary, I promise you that my all-powerful love will grant to all those who receive communion on the first Fridays for nine consecutive months the grace of final repentance. They will not die in my displeasure, nor without receiving the sacraments, and my heart will be their secure refuge in the last hour. Now, some people have told me, Father, that's kind of superstitious, nine, nine First Fridays. No. It's the sign of a committed Catholic who's making a serious effort at a devotion that changes a heart. That's what it is. It's someone who really wants to make a fervent commitment to be more committed to Christ. Do you want that? As I said, there are instructions in the parish bulletin and on the parish website on how to enthrone the image of the Sacred Heart in your homes. I want to encourage you to do this for the life of your family and the life of the family of this parish. The Holy Family was made because a young man and a young woman made Jesus the center of their lives and they enshrined his heart. And it will happen for us too. Amen. Thank you.